So I recently released a video on how to bypass Netflix's password share and crackdown using MeshNet on NordVPN. I'm not going to repeat what I said in that video. Do watch it if you haven't, and I'll put a link in the description and you can click over here as well. The problem with that solution is that it requires a computer to be on at your home or home location um, for you to be able to connect to it and route that traffic. Now, it is true that there could be multiple scenarios where you do not want to leave a computer on at home. Uh, if you're traveling for extended periods of time, for example, or if you have kids that are away and there's no one at home at that point, there's many scenarios where leaving a computer on is not an ideal situation. Hence why I'm making the second video to show you a second workaround that would let you uh, make use of NordVPN's MeshNet without having to keep a computer on at home. And this solution would be installing NordVPN on a Raspberry Pi. Now, before I jump in, a couple disclaimers. In the first video, I got a lot of comments with people saying we should cancel the Netflix subscription, etc. I completely understand that you might want to cancel your subscription either because you think the content is not great or as a form of protest and that is your prerogative. I respect that. I might even agree with that. However, we also have to respect the fact that some people cannot or do not want to cancel their Netflix subscription for whatever reason. And for those people, if I come across a solution that could inconvenience them less or even uh, cost them less money, I'm sharing that solution. If it helps you, great. If you don't care about it, feel free to stop watching. Second disclaimer, I also got comments from people who were saying, instead of paying Netflix, you're asking us to pay NordVPN. And well, first of all, I'm not asking you to do anything. Second of all, the MeshNet feature is free on NordVPN. You do not have to subscribe to the VPN service to get that. Now, in this case, the solution with the Raspberry Pi, yes, will cost you some money. But again, if it's better for you to pay an upfront cost for a Raspberry Pi and get the solution working, could even cost you less in the long run, or you might have more than two people you share the account with. And currently on Netflix, you can only add up to two extra members uh, to the household. Then again, this might be of help to you. If not, feel free to stop watching. Third disclaimer, I've tested this and it is working today as of this moment when I'm recording this video, but there's no telling if this will continue to work in the future or not, if Netflix is going to tighten things up and make it even harder. So for now it's working, tomorrow I don't know. And the last disclaimer, yes, this is going to be a little bit technical, however, it's scarier than it looks. So it might seem a bit daunting, but trust me, if you follow the instructions I'm gonna give, it's way easier than it looks, so don't be put off or scared by how technical it is. Very simple instructions, just a few steps, and you can get it working. Having said that, let's jump into the solution. So as I said, this does require a Raspberry Pi, and what a Raspberry Pi is, it's an SBC, or a single board computer, and essentially what that is, it's a very small and very cheap computer. These are supposed to start at about $25, $35. They are more expensive today, and that's because the demand has increased and the supply has decreased. So basic economics there, um, because of the semiconductor shortages, the supply chain shortages. Also, there are scalpers out there selling them for much higher than uh, the price that they should be sold at. However, Raspberry did say that the supply shortages should go back to normal to the pre-pandemic state somewhere around the second half of this year, which means the prices should go back to normal or around the MSRP. So what you need, first of all, is a Raspberry Pi, and there are plenty of different Raspberry Pi models, can be a bit confusing. What I would recommend is to keep this as simple as possible is one that has at least two USB ports. It has an ethernet port or built-in Wi-Fi and a video output like HDMI. Generally, I would recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 because it has fast gigabit ethernet. Keep in mind with the solution, all the devices that want to connect to Netflix are going to be routed through the Raspberry Pi, which means if your internet speed is throttled because of slow connectivity here, you, you might have an impact. For the moment, you do not need to be always connected to the Raspberry Pi, so you just need to connect to log in. But in case this changes in the future, and if you're buying a Raspberry Pi, I would recommend you go to the Raspberry Pi 4 because it has much faster connectivity. However, the Raspberry Pi 3, for example, and I have the 3B over here, uh, it has slower internet, but it works perfectly fine. I tested it on this 
and yeah, it works. In addition to the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna need a micro SD card. This is where you're gonna install the operating system, the Linux based operating system for the Raspberry Pi. You also need a micro SD reader. So this could be either something like this, where you can put the micro SD card and plug it into USB port on your computer, or it could be an adapter like this that converts a micro SD to an SD card, which could be a solution if you have a laptop that has an SD card reader. And lastly, you do need a USB keyboard and mouse for the initial setup. Now, if you have a wireless keyboard or mouse that could also work, I have the Apple Magic Keyboard, which is a Bluetooth keyboard. However, if you plug in the lightning adapter into a USB port, this becomes a wired keyboard, so this works. I also have a Logitech wireless mouse. Now with that one, if you plug in the cable, it does not work. However, if you plug in the unifying receiver that comes with it into the Raspberry Pi, then you can use the mouse. Now I will put in the description the list of things that you need to purchase and the recommended ones I would recommend to make things easier for you. Once you have all of those, we can get started. First thing you need to do is download the operating system on the micro SD card and to do that, you need to plug in the micro SD card into your computer and you need to go ahead and download Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll put links in the description for Mac or Windows. It's a small tool that makes it very easy to download and install the operating system on the micro SD card. Open that up. And first thing you do is select the operating system you wanna install. Now here you can install Ubuntu, either server or desktop. Personally, I think the simplest thing is just to install Raspberry Pi OS. It's very lightweight. So if you have an older Raspberry Pi, it'll work fine. Also, it has a GUI, so a graphical user interface, which means you can use your keyboard and mouse to control it and you don't need to be typing in strings of code. Next, select your micro SD card from the list and hit write. This is gonna take a minute or two and then you'll get a message that all is done. Simply remove your micro SD card and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Next up, you need to connect your Raspberry Pi to a monitor or a TV through the HDMI or the video output. Plug in your USB keyboard, your USB mouse. If you have an ethernet port or ethernet cable, plug that in. If not, you can also connect to Wi-Fi during the setup process. And finally, connect your Raspberry Pi to power, in this case, through a micro USB cable. And then all you need to do is simply follow the instructions on the screen, create a username and a password. And then if you're connecting via Wi-Fi, select your Wi-Fi network, put in the password. If it prompts you for updates, I would recommend you do the necessary updates. In this case, for this demo, I'm gonna skip the updates. And then when it's done, it's gonna ask you to restart your Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. Once the Raspberry Pi boots, go to the browser and type in nordvpn.com slash download. Once the page loads, scroll down to Linux, click on that. And here you're gonna see a command string for you to copy. Just click on this to copy it and then open terminal on your Raspberry Pi. Simply right click, paste and hit enter. This is going to install NordVPN on your Pi. After it's done installing, easiest thing to do is simply reboot the Raspberry Pi. Once it boots back in, open terminal again and type in NordVPN login. This is going to give you a URL. Again, copy the URL, open the browser, paste the URL, and this is going to take you to the login screen of NordVPN. If you have an account, log in with your credentials. If not, you can create an account and then log in. And then once you successfully logged in, just click on open NordVPN and you're good to go. The last thing you need to do is type in NordVPN set MeshNet on and then hit enter. And just like that, you should see a message if you've done everything correctly that says MeshNet is set to enabled successfully. And that's all there really is. What you've done right now is enabled MeshNet on NordVPN on the Raspberry Pi. Now, as I said in my earlier video, for this to work, you do need to have NordVPN on the TV that you are using to access Netflix. If you have a smart TV, you might have the NordVPN app in the App Store. In my case, I have a Samsung smart TV and unfortunately, it does not have the NordVPN app. However, I do have a Fire Stick 
So I installed NordVPN on the Fire Stick, and all you have to do is open NordVPN, log in to the same account, scroll down to MeshNet, make sure it's turned on, and then go to Route Traffic. And here, if you've done this correctly, you should see a Linux device, the Raspberry Pi, which is online with a green dot. And all you need to do is click to route traffic. So what this is doing any device around the world that is routing traffic through your Raspberry Pi would appear for all intents and purposes as if it is on your home Wi-Fi network or essentially in your household. So as far as Netflix is concerned, even if you are halfway across the world, you're routing your internet connection through the Raspberry Pi. It's as if you're sitting home, so you should have no issues running Netflix when you're far from home. And that's all, and that's it for now. Let me know in the comments section what you thought, or if you have any other suggestions on how to bypass the password sharing crackdown. And as always, if you liked the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.